Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Bible study. I want to give this title a name tonight. We're going to call it the King of the Kingdom's Cult. Yes, I want to focus in on one strong man. If you, if you can learn in scripture how to bind the strong man, then you can ransack his house. Jesus taught us that in the Gospels. Who was the strong man? Who was the strong man that he was referring to? More or less a spiritual entity, someone who has authority over um, his army or his military ranks. And it was a spiritual warfare statement that Jesus talked about. Um, so what I attempted to, guys and gals, is I try to get to the heart of the matter uh, when I come up with, you know, a Bible study that God presses on my heart. And this is kind of a, a sequel to the Bible study that I made several days ago about um, the Jehovah Witness versus the, uh, what I call the Philadelphia Church. You know, there's a remnant of, of Bible-believing Christians that are on the earth right now. And um, Jesus told us, in the book of Revelation, he said that, you know, you have little strength, but you have not denied my name. And so I'm going to provide an open door for you. You know, referring to the rapture of the church, we're talking about the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. And <laughs> thank you, Manette. I like sequels as well. In fact, sometimes I even like reruns, you know? Depends on what it is I'm watching, you know, but I'll go back and watch old movies, um, sometimes Bible studies even. You know, um, but yes, this is a sequel and we're not going to be on the Jehovah Witness topic too long this evening, but we are going to finish them up and address them. But what's really, really amazing about how I'm hopefully with God's help, I'm going to put this together is that all of the other religions in the world, uh, besides the true born again experience, beside the gospel that Paul gave us, what the God, the true gospel really is, okay? Our fables, um, I called it in this title, cults, but it can be called in scripture, another gospel. It can be called a doctrine of devils, which is what Paul calls them. Maybe I could call this title tonight, the king of the kingdoms of devils, you know, um, cults. And so the beauty of this tonight, hopefully, will be to let you all know that you don't need to be an expert in Jehovah Witness to minister to one of them. You don't need to be a, an expert in Mormonism or Roman Catholicism or Seventh-day Adventism or um, Chrislam or Satanism or any of that stuff. What you need to do, and I'm going to give it to you, Jesus is going to give it to you. I'm just going to relay what he said, okay? That's my goal tonight. So when you all are, um, are like, how am I going to debate this Jehovah Witness with all of his malarkey or all of his nonsense, you know, or the Mormons or whatever? Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> Congratulations to me, right? <laughs> yeah, they, re they removed the restriction off of my account finally because of me uh, talking about the um, little booklet that the IDF found in a um, Hamas leader's house in, in Gaza. And Fox News reported it, but since I told the audience what it was, I was censored for 30 days, all right? Yeah, I'm, I don't even wanna go there right now, but that's, I'm back though, so good. Not telling y'all I'm not gonna get censored again on another day, it gets probably gonna happen, but Lord, Lord willing, hopefully not too often. The goal tonight is exposing that king of the kingdom's cults. You know, there was a book called The Kingdom of the Cults years ago. I used to have that book. I think I might still have it. One of my parents' old boxes out in my container. I'll have to dig it out someday. But I, I've, I've modified their book. The book is like a phone book, by the way. It's like a, it's like a, man, it's like a thick Bible. You know, there's, I don't know, over a thousand pages of, you know, doctrines of devils and how to, how to, what, the, where these people came from, where they sprout up from, what their motives were and all of that stuff. But what I'm here to tell you is you don't need to be an expert in all of that. You just need to know a couple of things. Okay. Number one, who is the king of these kingdoms cults? And 
How, how is your relationship with the Lord? Are you good and solid with him? Because you know, he's gonna teach you better than I can. He's gonna give, show you great and mighty things that you know not and I know not. But that's your personal walk with him, okay? He's your best friend. He's your gu a guidance counselor. He's your therapist. He's your healer. Um, he will be sticking to you closer than a brother, your father, etc. You know, and I've told a lot of people just recently, I said, you know, because our plight on this earth is difficult at times, guys. You know, but we have a heavenly kingdom that we're waiting for someday. And I, I've told people, I'm like, yeah, it can be hard on this in this life. But the thing is, though, is when you're uh, saved, you got the Holy Spirit living inside of you. He is your best friend. He, he is with you through all of these difficulties. And imagine not having him. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to I'm going to talk about J-dubs a little bit. But I want to send y'all a um, picture, okay? This is going to be the theme on my picture in on my YouTube channel when I'm done with this Bible study. I want to show you this. I'm going to drop this. Oh, wait, I can't. Ah, I don't think I can. Uh, what I'll do, guys, when this is over with, I'll, I'll drop the picture for you. In fact, here's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go over to the chat room, okay? And this is in the left behind chat room. Let me drop this picture in there for you guys. For those of you who are connected in the chat room, I'll drop it over here real quick, okay? I love this picture. And I, this was in one of these old Bibles that I had when I was a kid. And I'll never forget this scene. And it was etched into my mind. Like, I never forgot it, even to this very day. And I was like, that's going to be what I put on the um, video, the Bible study, this message tonight, okay? Now, what it's a picture of, guys and gals, is Jesus being tempted by Satan in the wilderness, okay, before he starts his ministry. Two prominent characters in Scripture, okay? You have the devil, and then you have the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who is Jehovah Witness, Emmanuel, God with us, okay? I'm going to keep planting that seed on you while I'm doing this Bible study. Don't go anywhere, Come on, now you co you go to our door and you knock on the door and you expect us to listen to your sales pitch, all right? It's not gonna hurt you. It's not gonna kill you to hang around with me for a little while and listen to what I have to say. You got a little bit of it the other day. You know, I put this <laughs> this video on my Facebook um, from this evening, you know? Yeah, it has something to do with the Jehovah Witnesses, but they're probably not gonna like it too much. So I pull up and there's like probably like 100 or 150 geese out in the park, all right? And my dogs are just itching to get out of the truck so they can chase them. So that I drop the tailgate down and the dogs take off and the geese are going, <laughs> they were mad, boy, they were mad. And my dog was running around chasing them and they were flying, they were telling me off. Like, <laughs> that reminds me of the Jehovah Witnesses because you know, they're all, the birds of a feather flock together, okay? Mormons are the same way. RCs are the same way. Chrislam, you all, you all are more sneaky than everybody else. You sneak into our churches pretending to be a Christian. You're preaching another gospel that Paul talks about. You're a cult. I've had people in Baptist churches, they're cults, and they're in our churches teaching Sunday school. But the, the geese, I'm like, you know, that's a sheepdog. My dog's like a sheepdog, and he's got his King James Bible, and they don't want nothing to do with that King James Bible. As soon as you start preaching the King James Bible to them, they, they're like, rah, 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 rah. they're out of here, just like they were off of my porch the other day. <laughs> Thanks, Deb. But it reminded me of that. I was thinking, you know, that reminds me of, of the Jehovah Witnesses. The Mormons, not so much. They're not so, they don't get offended as quickly, although I've seen them get offended, you know, at times where you kind of see the d demons in their eyes, but... The Jehovah Witnesses, the reason why they get offended so easily is because they're not there really there for your salvation. Let's be honest. They're there. If they can convert you to a Jehovah Witness, they're happy. Okay, that's a feather in their cap. But they're only there for this, mainly to give you their flyer because they're going to get a higher spot in heaven the more flyers they pass out. Um, false witness on me, bro. Okay, TJ, well, I'm going to... I'm gonna get back to you on that a little bit later. Why don't you stick around and hang around on this Bible study before you go judging me or judging somebody else? Um, 
you should be careful what you talk about. I'm going to talk about the Jehovah Witness tonight, and I'm going to talk about every other cult. You might want to think about jumping off, all right, if it offends you. If you got a thick skin, then go ahead and stay. But I'm going to be exposing these cults. And, and just stick around, all right? And I don't care if they get... They got mad at me on my porch the other day, all right? But I never raised my voice. I never talked over them. I never interrupted them. But when I gave them the scriptures... Rightly dividing, we're going to talk about that tonight. Rightly dividing, you know what? They went, oh, 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 and just, oh, and they left, okay? So, offense, it's, Jesus said, this is impossible, but offenses should come. And so, I'm not going, I'm not here for a popularity contest. I'm here to plant seeds. I'm here to help people find Jesus Christ, the one in the Gospels, the one that died for people's sins recognizing that we're sinners and we need a savior. Sounds very elementary, doesn't it? If you know your Bible, but guess what? There's many people that don't even know that because they've been given another gospel. Now this picture, getting back to this picture that I dropped in the chat room, Satan and Jesus are having a confrontation, okay? The two main characters theme in the Bible and it's been a battle going on even before the creation of man in the Garden of Eden when Lucifer was kicked out of heaven because of, of being prideful, okay? Now, it takes a little bit of, of consideration and meditation when you look at this picture where Satan is tempting Jesus in the wilderness. And here's the thing about it. I was there in July of 2023, and my guide took me to this very desert where Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. I was with some friends. I was with my guide. I couldn't, I couldn't hang out very long. I wished I could have been there by myself because I would have just sat, man, that would have been amazing. But I still, it felt, it felt like a very special place to me. And this confrontation out in the desert is what I want to focus in on. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Jehovah Witnesses here in a few minutes. But I want, I want this audience tonight to focus in on, on this, what I'm going to be reading in the book of Matthew and in the book of Luke. All right? And hold on to, hold on to that thought. Now, I'm going to go over to some Jehovah Witness stuff. Um, okay, I'm just reading your comment, TJ, um, about me that isn't true. Okay, well, I don't know what that is. You'll have to get back to me on that a little bit later. Um, I'm not here to talk about our back and forth comments on Facebook, but I'll be happy to take that up with you when I'm done with this, all right? I'll see what it was that you got triggered about or offended about. All right, <clears throat> now here, what we're going to do is this, okay? Let's talk about Jehovah Witness a little bit. I told you I was going to do a part two on this, and it's not going to be long, but I do want to finish them off. The difference between... Um, True born-again believers, and I call them the Philadelphia Church, and then cults like Jehovah Witness, all right? But Jehovah Witness, I want to teach some of you how to, how to witness to them in love. Witness, witnessing to the witnesses, <laughs> all right? There's a scenario that the Jehovah Witnesses teach about the end times. It's not in the Bible, and it doesn't deter them in the least, by the way. They believe it's there because the watchtower has convinced them all right. They continue to misinterpret scripture as they go from door to door, warning of the perils of Armageddon and attacking all biblical doctrines. They continue to be successful at luring, here we go, unsuspecting and unschooled people into their ranks. They thought I was unsuspecting. They thought I didn't know my Bible when I came up. You know what? There's a good chance when they knocked on my door that I don't know the Bible, that I don't know it. Because most of the people in this community around here, and especially in blue states, blue cities, don't know their Bible. Now, they get surprised sometimes, of course. But they're relying on, I don't know my Bible very well. I did, and I do. They place particular emphasis on recruiting the millions of professing Christians who may not be biblically well-grounded. When one looks at a Jehovah Witness's weekly schedule, all right, this is what they do if they're serious about their faith. 
It's easy to understand why they're so effective in sharing and defending their faith. Every kingdom hall, um, their church building that is, or not a church, synagogue of Satan, I'll call it, has five meetings a week and all members of the congregation are ex expected to attend. On Sundays, there's public talk, uh, followed by watchtower study. Theatric ministry school is offered on a weekly night, followed by a service meeting. In addition, every Jehovah Witness is required to attend weekly book study. And after that, do field work, door to door, um, street corner witnessing, okay? They were telling me at my door the other day, they're like, you, you, your church isn't doing, you're not doing any of this. And I'm, I'm like, I got, I got this much of it out. I said, you know, there's many other ways to share the gospel than go into somebody's door. Maybe they don't want you knocking on their door. Did you ever think about that? Private property, no trespassing, no solicitors, etc. You're taking a chance getting people off guard. They might be in their pajamas. They might be on the phone. They might be in a business meeting, working at home, and you're interrupting their day. So as soon as they answer the door, they're going to be irritated with you. Just because you want to leave a flyer, you're not interested really in saving them or your version of saving them. You are interested in works. That's what the Jehovah Witnesses are all about, ladies and gentlemen. Hang on, hang on, hang on, because I've got something I'm driving home with this. The late Walter Martin wrote and spoke extensively to combat false teachings of the Watchtower. Observed that the average Jehovah Witness can cause the average Christian untold trouble by sprinkling the conversation with Greek or Hebrew terms. Well, guess what, Jehovah Witnesses? I know some Greek and Hebrew also. I'm not saying that everybody, every Christian does, but I study, all right? Bring it on. While repeating scripture out of context. Oh my goodness, hang on for, for the book of Matthew and the book of Luke. <laughs> We're going to find out who the king of the kingdom's cults are. Martin went on to say that every Christian needs to be absolutely sure of what the Bible teaches regarding the Trinity. Jesus' deity and resurrection, the Holy Spirit and salvation through grace, not works. If you hope to answer, much less witness to these Jehovah Witnesses who come to your door, you need these Bible basics to give a reason for the hope that you have within you. That's 1 Peter 3, 15. And I'll get some more comments later, guys. I'm just going to stay focused on this. But I'll check them before we're done, okay? And then if you want to, you know, make a comment to me directly, I'll still scan, but I'll try to catch you at the end. Thanks for your patience. Okay. Above all, you need to know in your heart, not according to reason, that Christ is indeed God, which when I told them, uh, God... That, that Jesus is God, they got really offended by that. They were, their hackles on the back of their neck was standing up and they left angry at me. You know, blasphemy! <laughs> when they're the ones that are resisting the Holy Spirit, you know? Um, okay. He died, Jesus died for our sins and was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. All right, now I want to give you some pointers that you need to, not to be an expert in witnessing Jehovah Witnesses, but that you need to, and it's not very big blocks of scripture. If you have these as your armor in Ephesians chapter six, it says that we need to put on the whole armor of God, especially in these days of deception right now. If you do these little things right here that I'm gonna read to you in scripture, and you get this etched into your mind, you may not have to have chapter and verse memorized, but if you have this etched into your mind, you're going to be ready for most of those fiery darts that Satan has sent out um, to try to penetrate or break your faith or make you try to make you look dumb because they're supposedly experts in scripture and you don't know what you're talking about, stuff like that. All you need are these very basics, okay? Let me show you the difference between Christians and Jehovah Witnesses. And this is in regarding authority. Jehovah Witnesses may do independent thinking um, and must absolutely adhere to the decisions of scriptural understanding of the Watchtower Society. So, you know what's very common with them and the Roman Catholics and the Mormons and Islam? It's the same thing. Um, you have to check in with the, the Watchtower Society, all right? You, gotta, you got to submit to their authority as far as whatever they tell you is right. You're committed to that. 
Christians depend on the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the scriptures to learn to obey God, not a man. Now, let me give you this. Uh, please jot these scriptures down. There's not a lot here. Just jot them down, okay? Um, who are you relying on? Are you relying on a Bible teacher, a pastor, an evangelist? Um, let's say they have the Holy Spirit, God-given God Holy Spirit in them. Great, 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 okay? But remember, above all else, above all else, those folks have to pass the litmus test of Scripture themselves, and so do I, okay? And your best friend, by the way, is the Holy Spirit, and he teaches you. These Scriptures I'm referring to is in Acts chapter 5, verse 29, that's the first one, the same book, but chapter 17, verse 11, and then 1 John chapter 2, verse 26 and 27, regarding authority, okay? Your final authority, every one of you, brother and sisters, your final authority is Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. He's waiting to commune with you in the Bible. The Mormons don't like that. The Jehovah Witness don't like that. Islam doesn't like that. Chrislam doesn't like that. They all want someone standing on a podium giving you and teaching you and telling you how it is and trying to strip you of your free thinking abilities, which our politicians are doing that now. Uh, mainstream media does that. They're masters at it. They get you lured in. They can, they trigger you on purpose. Let me, let me give you an example. You want to, you want to see some deception? Here's some deception for you. I get a letter like once a week from a mortgage company telling me I'm late on my mortgage, all right? They're not my mortgage company. I know who my mortgage company is and it's automatically taken out of my bank every month. But they're telling me I'm delinquent, I need to call them, blah, 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 blah. They're not my mortgage company, they're scammers, all right? Deception. Do I, am I gonna listen to whoever's barking at me in this letter? Oh, you better call us. You're delinquent, your credit's gonna be bad. Mainstream media will say something to get you angry on purpose, to keep you glued to whatever it is they wanna to try to bend your mind into thinking. Um, there's trigger points. People get angry, angry sometimes because the person talking to you wants to get you angry. So how do you correct all of that? You correct all of it through the Holy Spirit. He is your authority, okay? Not the Jehovah Witnesses, not the Mormons, not the Catholics, etc. Regarding the Trinity, here's a big one with the Jehovah Witnesses. Regarding the Trinity, Christ's deity, and the resurrection. Jehovah Witnesses find it difficult to worship a three-headed God. They call Jesus a mighty God with a small g, all right? Because he's not God to them. <laughs> He is a God, a small G, a small God, but not the almighty God, not God Jehovah. They say Jesus was raised from the grave, not a human creature, but a spirit. Christians believe that God is three co-equal persons who exist through one divine being. Okay, now, are we just saying that because that's why we believe it? No, we go um, off of Matthew chapter three, Verses 13 through 17, jot this down, please. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse 14. Christ is divine and the second person of the Trinity and equal to the Father and the Holy Spirit. See John 1, 1, um, Colossians 1, verse 15 through 19. Philippians chapter two, verse five through 11. Okay, this is where it talks specifically. Now, what I'm saying is, if you all can grasp this as born-again Bible-believing Christians, this is all the armor that you need against cults, okay? We're gonna talk about that king of the cults in a minute, but I wanna get through this little section right here, and then um, we're gonna talk about rightly dividing. It's very, very important as a Christian to rightly divide. Regarding salvation, Jehovah Witnesses say Christ's death provides the opportunity for men and women to work, work, work for their salvation. You don't even have to be a Jehovah Witness to go to a church that says, if you don't work your salvation, work like with trembling and fear, they misinterpret that scripture. I'll give you a rightly dividing scripture that, that just, it fits working your salvation with trembling and fear just beautifully together, sound doctrine. 
okay, sound doctrine. Because true born again Bible believing Christians understand that we don't work for uh, to get to heaven to be approved by the Father uh, through Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ's works alone that put us right through the Father. Okay, what we do is uh, born again Bible believing Christians, Jehovah Witness, pay attention, get over here and pay attention, please, Mormons. We rely on the Holy Spirit to uh, convict us of our sins. When we do something wrong, he's living in here and he's telling us, hey, David, I didn't like that today. Okay, now it's up to me if I'm gonna repent or not, if I'm gonna ask the Lord for forgiveness for that sin, but I don't lose my salvation, what will happen is I'll be miserable. I'll grieve the Holy Spirit. And then I'm probably not gonna be feeling very good about that for a while unless I get right with the Lord. But that's my relationship. Your relationship, if you're married with somebody or if you are engaged or you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend and you all have a fight, it doesn't mean you, you're breaking up. Not, not, not sometimes. <laughs> but you have a, an argument that makes both of you angry, okay? But you don't say, all right, I'm breaking up with you. I'm breaking up with you because this was, you know, like a lot of people do that. But you know, if you're mature, you work it out. Okay, and you come back and you say, I'm sorry or whatever. It's even more so uh, serious when you have a born again Bible believing experience. You can't lose your salvation because it's a blood covenant. Blood covenants are the, the strongest covenant that God can make with man. This is why Israel, by the way, will never lose their um, covenant through Abraham with God. He's going to restore Jerusalem and Israel to those original boundaries that God promised him in the Old Testament. Amen, Joey, that's exactly correct. We are saved, we are not saved by works, but by grace. Amen, hallelujah, that's exactly right. Yes, the born again Bible believing experience is a blood covenant. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He shed his blood um, and I'm sorry, your works, are not gonna add up to his perfect life and his sacrifice. He was the perfect lamb of God that died for the sins of the world. There's no way I could ever do that. I've told people before, that'd be like me trying to climb Mount Everest barefooted in the winter. I can't get to the top. I probably wouldn't make it 100 feet and I'd slip and fall and hurt myself. That's what these Jehovah Witnesses are trying to do. They're trying to climb Mount Everest. Paul says it's another gospel. He says in the book of Galatians, let them be accursed. If anybody preaches another gospel under the, than the one I've given you, let them be accursed. You know, the Bible says to curse and bless not. Okay. But Paul says, if they're giving you another gospel, let them be accursed. So how serious is it to God when someone comes to you knocking on your door with another gospel? Let them be accursed. You know why? How, you know, because souls are at stake. People are dying and going to hell every day because of the Jehovah Witness destruction, because of the Mormon destruction, because of the Roman Catholic de destruction, because they, those people have convinced you that your works are going to get you there. And by the way, there's Christians that are not mature enough yet. And there, I was at that point one time in my life when I was really young. I thought, I'm, gonna, I'm never going to make it. I'm never going to make it as a Christian because... I can't, I can't make it. God's going to throw me away. And then when I got a little bit older, the first thing that happened to me was I find, I, I discovered how much God really, really loves me. Okay. <clears throat> and he loves you too, by the way. And what he did for us on the cross is a blood covenant that can't be broken. It only relies, it only relies on God's faithfulness and he won't break his word. People break their word all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, they break I've had <laughs> a million broken promises, all right? And there's times where I haven't been able to keep my own promises. But does God break his? Nope. Nope, not blood covenants. No way. No way, Jose. Okay? So, uh, let's cover the last point of this. And I'm going to take you to the book of Matthew and the book of Luke. This is going to be really good. Hang in there. Jehovah Witnesses believe regarding... Um, Jesus' return and immortality. I, I touched on some of these um, with the two watchtower women the other day. Jehovah Witnesses believe that Christ returned to earth invisibly 
1914, all right? And now, now rules from heaven, no longer visible to human sight. They claim that man does not have an immortal soul. At death, man's spirit, life force, goes out and no longer exists. Christians believe that Christ will return to earth physically, visibly, audibly. I told them that the other day. See 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 through 17. And you all know that one, right? That's the pre-tribulation rapture of the church description, part of that. And that either goes to be with Christ, that's us, born-again Bible-believing Christians, Luke 23, 46, 2 Corinthians 5, 8, uh, chapter, I'm sorry, Chapter 5, verse 8, Philippians chapter 1, verses 22 and 23, or awaits judgment. See John chapter 5, verse 24 through 30. Now, on a parting note for Jehovah Witnesses, this is what I want to tell you folks. Um, there's a lot I could tell you, but I'm going to leave this little thought in your mind, okay? Tell me, ladies and gentlemen, can you think of a movie that you've watched in the past that you like your favorite, your all-time favorite movie. And someone asked me that question. I really can't tell them I have an all-time favorite because there's a lot of movies that I've enjoyed watching over the years. Do you remember who that, that, that main actor was in the movie? Do you remember who it was? Let's just say, for example, um, and I don't know if this is a good example or not, but let's just say Top Gun, all right? Who's the main actor in Top Gun? Tom Cruise, right? Tom Cruise is the main actor in Top Gun. So, so the Jehovah Witnesses, right? This is what I would tell the Jehovah Witnesses. In, in the Bible, one of the main stars in the Bible, okay, is Israel. They, when you read the Bible, Israel is the main star in Scripture, all right? And some people will go, no, Jesus is the main star, or God is the main star, uh, yeah, of course, but Jesus was born in Bethlehem. <laughs> he is, um, you know, of Joseph and Mary, born of a virgin, by the way. But, you know, the lineage goes back. Um, Israel, uh, my point is, Israel is the main star in Scripture. Now, you Jehovah Witnesses have tried to change the copyright on that and make it all about you and, and some people from America that have conformed Scripture because you didn't like hearing about hell and, and eternal damnation and things like that. You, that just didn't fit um, your narrative very good. So you had that one guy that changed it. He, he conformed it to how he liked it to be because he got with some Adventists and said, oh, the hell is not real. And he liked that. And that's how your Jehovah Witness cult was formed, okay? Satan doesn't like the prosperity of hell either, by the way. So my point is, um, cults out there, you do have a place in scripture, but it's not in a very good light, okay? It's kind of in a dark place. But you're mentioned in scripture. You're called a cult. You're, uh, we call you a cult. Um, Paul calls you a doctrine of devils. He calls you uh, another gospel in the book of Galatians. And he furthermore, I didn't say this, Paul says, you have a curse on you, okay? You have a curse. Now, if you're gonna be angry with me, go ahead. Because I've got a thick skin and I'm not here to win a popularity contest. Like I said that earlier tonight on my Bible studies, I'm not here for a popularity contest. I'm trying to do what God wants me to do with these opening these Bible verses up. Speaking of which, let's do that right now, okay? Let's do this. All right, and then we're gonna be done, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for sticking with me on this, all right? Now, that picture I dropped in the left behind chat room shows this. This is like kind of like the finale for me. Okay. This is like the finale. Um, you have two main uh, characters um, pretty much in scripture. You know, Israel is the place where Christians need to be paying attention because that's like our, that's our, that's our, our time, time clock, time watch for, when Jesus is returning first for his bride, the church, and then he's going to come back for his people, the Jews, all right? And they will learn who their true Messiah is. Tick tock, tick tock, it's coming, all right? They're gonna cry when they see him coming back. They're going to cry and they're going to mourn as someone who had mourned, mourned losing a son. 
you know, they're going to, their eyes are going to be open after the time of Jacob's trouble is over with. And they're going to weep and weep and cry and cry and cry that they, they had a hand in crucifying their Messiah, you know. But we all did, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we all had a place in why Jesus had to die for us because we have a sin problem, you know. But picture... Satan and Jesus in this wilderness, okay? I was there. It was so amazing, and I wish I could have stayed, like, for a while. I wanted to stay um, and just pray and have a Bible, and just that would have been amazing, but I couldn't stay very long. It was just a blessing to be there. But <clears throat> anyway, you have these two main characters, okay? You have the Lord, and then you have the devil, all right? We're going to read about this in a minute. And I know many of you probably heard this story a thousand times. But, you know, Scripture's alive and we might pull a few gold nuggets out of this before I'm done reading it. But let's see what happens. So, the first thing that happens here in this confrontation between the Lord Jesus Christ and Satan in this wilderness is that you have this king, okay? And we're going to learn that he is a king, Um and he's, he is a king of the kingdom of cults, false religions out there. He is the author of all of them, okay? He's the author of all the false religions, and he comes right to Jesus right at the very beginning. Now, in Matthew um, chapter 4, verse 3, let's start, and I'm going to read this to you. He's called the tempter. And when the tempter came to him, he said... If thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. So the first thing that the devil does when he talks to Jesus, he is questioning his identity. He is questioning his authority and his identity. Okay. Now, what does this king of the kingdoms of cults do today? He is getting everybody to question who Jesus is. He questioned Jesus himself straight to his face. And he says, if you, if you are, you know, people didn't know who he was in the beginning. Some were, some knew, but, you know, like Simon knew, but many people didn't know who Jesus was. They didn't know he was the son of God, but Satan knew, Satan knew, but he was questioning his authority. He was questioning his identity. And isn't that the same today that we have these different cults running around with a different Jesus there? You know, the Jesus to the Jehovah Witnesses is not Emmanuel, even though he is Emmanuel, God with us, right? You have the Mormons with their version of Jesus. You have the Roman Catholics with their version of Jesus. Yeah, if, Debbie says if, right? If, all right? The more the Jehovah Witnesses the other day, when I told them who Jesus was, they got, they, they didn't yell at me. They're like, oh, this disgusting look on their face, right? Before they left. Because their king got offended. And the king works through these through these poor puppets that need to get saved, that need to find the real Jesus. Now, we're going to get through this. We're almost done, by the way. We're getting pretty close. I don't want to make this too long, but I'm, I'm trying to make it straight to the point. Jesus answered and said, It's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So, you know, he got him to try to break his fast. Um, but what did Jesus do? All right? Satan came and he said, command, command, you know, command, command. In verse, uh, uh, verse 3 of chapter 4, command. Because that's what God does. He makes commandments, okay? God says in the book of Revelation... Grant this, do this, deny that, you know, do this, go here, hold the winds back. That's what God does. He, he makes commandments through his temple in heaven and the angels go out and do what God says to do. Okay. So Satan is temp, uh, tempting him by saying, if you're the son of God, command. So he knows, Satan knows in scripture that God commands things. Okay. And he's saying to Jesus, command then, command. Command if you're the son of God. Okay. Now, why is that important? Because it's in scripture. Um, it's in scripture that God commands. Now, since we're taking one scripture, right? Because Satan is, Satan is the king of these cults. 
What he does is he gets you, me and me, ladies and gentlemen, to focus on one area of scripture. All right. Um, there's scriptures that God commands. Okay. The Ten Commandments. All right. So you look at that and you go, yeah, that's true. He commands. He commands. But what does Jesus do? He answers him with another scripture. And he says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of of God. Okay. So let's do this. All right. Let's do this. Did you know that what Jesus quoted back to the devil can be found in multiple scriptures? Deuteronomy 8, 3, Luke 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 4, Matthew 4, 7 through 10, Luke 4, uh, chapter 4, and we already read uh, verses 4 through 8, Romans chapter 15, verse 4, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. And he quotes it back to him. So what do we find Jesus doing with the devil here? What do we find him doing? And this is what I want brothers and sisters in Christ to do with Jehovah Witnesses, with Mormons, with Roman Catholics, okay? Because what their king gets them to do is to focus on one area of scripture and you, you pound them with it. You pound them, pound them, pound them, pound them, pound them. What did our master tell us to do? We rightly divide. We rightly divide. Jesus took Satan's um, misquoted scriptures, <clears throat> okay? I would say the motive of misquoting, misquoting the motive. And he rightly divided and corrected the devil by saying, um, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up to the holy city and set him on a pinnacle in the, of the temple. And he saith unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down for it's written. He shall give his angels charge over thee as in their hands. They shall bear thee up lest they dash any time thou uh, uh, foot against a stone. That's in Psalm chapter 91, um, chapter um, 91, Psalm 91. That's in Psalm 91. Debbie says to keep it in context. Exactly. So the cults, Deb and everybody else that's paying attention, they, they, they do just like their master does, okay, the devil. They'll take one area and they, they, they feed that to you, okay? And they might even use a King James, but the, uh, I think it's, what did the Jehovah Witness use? They use a World Reformation version. It's a totally twisted version of the Bible. But the, the King James, if someone does use a King James on you and they're being manipulated, okay, maybe unknowingly a lot of times, they're only doing what their father is you know, motivating them to do just to focus on one area, right? And not rightly divide. Jesus rightly divides the scriptures. And I want to, I want to show you something else. that's really, really cool about this. When I get down to the bottom here, I'm almost done. I keep saying that, but I am, <laughs> I promise. And he's uh, okay. So the, de uh, the devil told him, you know, he tempted him. Okay. Here's how Jesus replied. He says it written, you shall not tempt the Lord thy God. So that's rightly dividing. Satan tried to use scripture, Psalm 91, to get him to commit suicide. And Jesus rightly divided and told him, you shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him uh, all the kingdoms and the world and the glory of them. In a moment, and in the book of Luke, I won't go there, but in the book of Luke, you can read a short version of this temptation situation here. And it says, in a moment of time, so Satan showed the kingdoms of the world, probably from ancient times to 2023, all right? And, and showed Jesus all of this. And he said unto him, all these things I will give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Jesus saith unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only thou shalt serve. And there's, that's rightly dividing the scripture. And then the devil left him. And behold, the angels came and ministered to him. Just Psalm 91 to top it off, right? Satan tried to misquote Psalm 91. Jesus corrected him. And then when he left, the angels, because angels came and ministered and they'll come and minister to you, just like it says in Psalm 91. So cool. So cool, guys. Now, here's what I want to leave you with, okay? Um, and I'm going to just pull this up on the fly. Okay. Why is it so important to rightly divide? I think I gave like one good example of why we rightly divide. 
And there's some people that, you know, like Christians and some of them, you know, they, and I'm not picking on people just saying, no, you're wrong and I'm right. And, you know, I, that's not my goal to do this, but I'm just saying that they might tell me that I look at 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a worker who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, okay? And they're like, you're sure stuck on that, you know? Um, <laughs> okay, well, if you're, if you're concerned with me not rightly dividing, which it tells us to do, um, let me give you some cross-references, all right? Let me give you some cross-references of rightly dividing the scriptures, in Hebrews chapter 411, let's go there, okay? This is called rightly dividing, rightly dividing. <laughs> so we're rightly dividing um, the rightly dividing passage, okay? Let's pull it up. Okay, one second here. Let me grab this, all right. Um, okay, one second. Let me pull this up. Sorry, my, I want the King James Version, so just hang tight with me for one second. Okay. I just need a minute. Okay. There is a boatloads of scriptures, okay, about rightly dividing, not just in 2 Timothy 2.15. It's very, very important, and this is what we call sound doctrine, okay? Um, sound doctrine is taking an area of scripture which the Jehovah Witness and the Mormons and the Roman Catholics, they are amateurs at this, okay? Why do I call them amateurs? Because they have this kingdom hall thing where some demonically inspired person is telling them the way it's gonna be. Oh, let me get that for you, Deb. I'm working on that, okay. Um, okay, 1 Corinthians 3, 1, okay? Um, one second here. And I'm gonna do this other thing. I'm gonna give you the... Blue letter Bible cross references in the chat, okay? Just one second. Let me get down to King James. All right. Even I, brethren, could not speak to you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babies in Christ. Okay? And so what, what uh, Paul is saying here to... Um, he's not calling them carnal Christians, but he's like your babies in Christ. So I have to talk to you with these passages of scripture that you're able to understand. Um, I am, Terry, I'm doing really well, thank you. Um, I'm gonna post this, let me post this in the chat. I know I can do this. I can't post images in the chat, but I wanna give you cross references to rightly dividing the scriptures. Now, I, I don't have time in this Bible study to talk to you all about um, why I believe that King James is a very important translation of the Bible to be in. And I'm not saying that you all can't get saved in another version of the Bible. Um, I know that there's some Christians in our group that love King, I'm um, sorry, New King James and some other ones. And, you know, I mean, I've read those before myself. Like I had a good news Bible that my grandmother gave me when I was 19 years old. And um, I read it for the first, that's the first Bible that I read from cover to cover was a good news but here's what happened to me, all right? When I got older, um, I started to learn that it wasn't so important for me to have somebody else remove the these and the thous and some of those old English words that I felt like, oh, I don't need to know that. That's, I need someone to make it easy for me to read. Well, this is how the king of the kingdoms of the cults gets in and you can't trust these people, guys. So yeah, there's easier versions to read, okay? And you know, um, there's important passages you can get saved in, of course, and you can still read the same stories. But, but the thing is, we're living in days of deception. There's, I forgot how many different translations that there is now, but it's really off the charts. It's crazy. And even LGBTQ has their own version of the Bible now. You can let your imagination run a while with you on what you think's in there. But my point is, is that I want to go back to King James, okay? Even though some of the words are a little more difficult for people that we don't use to understand, I told the Jehovah Witness on the deck, they're like, oh, we don't use that because you don't need the thee and the thou and all. And I said, look, I like to study, ladies. I like my time with the Holy Spirit. 
I don't want someone telling me what it means or that this means or that means. I like to do my own independent um, study. I like to look up Greek and Hebrew. I like to use cross-reference. I like to rightly divide. I like Strong's concordance. I like to study. You know why? Because a lot of the gold nuggets that I share with people um, on social media, like right now, a lot of what I have shared with some of you in the past has came from my own independent research. And who, who gets the credit for whatever it is that I find that's amazing? It's God. He's the one. I'm not taking no credit for nothing. He's the one that reveals amazing things to me that I share with some of you out there that remember what I talk about. And I don't take no credit for none of that, okay? The Holy Spirit is what shows me these things. We're seeing incredible Bible prophecy being fulfilled in Israel right now. And this whole thing with Hamas is in scripture. <laughs> big time, big time, it's there. And this peace deal, I'm pretty sure the one after we get raptured is gonna happen. Antichrist will sign in Daniel 9.27. He'll confirm it in Daniel 9.27. That's being formed as I speak right now. I Look, we might have a year or two left before the church is raptured. I don't know. I'm telling you though, Everything is in place for the seven-year tribulation to begin. Everything. We're talking the image of the beast in Revelation 13. We're talking about a departure of the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Uh, they will not endure sound doctrine anymore. We're living in the days of Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah now. I don't think I need to give you any evidence for some of you who are paying attention. You know, you can go on there and look for yourself. Like, come on. This whole craziness that we got going on in our country and around the world, and you have people in the spirit of Antichrist, many have gone out into the world. Paul says, little children, it's the last hour. That was a future prophecy reference to not 2,000 years ago. That was for now, all right? Paul said, little children, it's the last hour. As you have heard, Antichrist shall come, but even as you know, many Antichrists have gone out into the world that is how you know that you're in the last time. He said that. And do we see that? Yep. That's another thing you can check off on your box. Many other things that we can check off on the box. Now, if you're one of these brothers and sisters who I love y'all, you don't think Jesus is coming back soon? That, you know, look, it's not a salvation or a relationship breaker with me. I still care about you guys. I love you like you're my family anyway. But the problem is, guys, I suspect that you're not in your Bible enough. You might be, you might be conformed to what some speaker or some Laodicean type of minister has told you that's more important to read about than something else. Okay, salvation is the end-all be-all for us because we need to we need to know how to get saved and be saved and going to heaven. But the thing is though, once you get saved, then you need to be paying attention to the times and the seasons. I didn't say that. Jesus says that. He says it himself, not me. He rebuked the Pharisees for not knowing the time of their visitation. And what did what does it say? What did Paul say? He said, um, when they cry peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as a woman in labor. What is it I talk about all the time? The coming of the Lord is in like labor pains, okay? So... They're crying peace and safety right now. Peace and safety, peace and safety, peace and security all the time, all the time. And it's, you know, Jerusalem and Israel have become, it's becoming a cup of trembling. Right now, it's a cup of trembling only to get more intense. But right now you have the United Nations. <clears throat> you have, uh, who else was it? Who else? It's, it's uh, Russia. I just saw this on the news today. They're calling for a two-state solution. They're telling the United Nations, they look, you gotta, you gotta put a stop to this in, in Gaza. Gotta put a stop to it. Israel has every right to defend themselves, all right? Put a stop, put it, we gotta get a two-state solution put together. What does that mean in scripture? What does that mean for Bible-believing Christians when they're talking about a two-state solution? I've been sitting for too long. Let me get out of my chair, okay? I'm gonna tell you all what it means. Joel, Joel chapter three, three verse two, two talks, talks about, about God saying uh, to the Palestinians, O people of Palestine, um, are you going to recompense me for the land that you've basically taken from me? And if you try to recompense me, 
Quickly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own heads. It's right there if you all want to go look at it. What does that mean? It means that the Palestinians are going to get their state. And they're crying for it right now. Does it mean it's going to happen tomorrow? No. Next week? No. Next year? No. But you know what? We're that close. And when it does, if the church is still here to see that happen, we are literally on standby, ready to be raptured. And I'm not, I'm talking to mature Christians now. I'm not talking to Laodicean Christians. I'm not talking to cults. You all are going to go do what you're going to do, no matter what I say, all right? I understand, all right? So I'm not trying to make you believe what I believe, but other believers, we're talking the family of God here. You all know, you all know what the Bible says, and you're awake. And I'm telling you, if we see, now we could be raptured before it happens. But that to me is the final nail in the coffin, okay? That's a final nail because my pastor and I were talking about this the other night. And I said, you know, and, he, and my pastor agreed, we both understand this. God is a jealous God. He is, it's like a consuming fire for Israel, okay? That little sliver of land is not even the original boundaries. And he is going to get angry, angry, angry when they divide and give the Palestinians part of Jerusalem. God loves Jerusalem. It's not some temple in Salt Lake City, Utah. It's not Mecca. It's not the Vatican, okay? It's Jerusalem. And guess what? Old Scratch knows it, all right? The devil knows it. He knows it. And he, is, he wants it too, all right? He wants it too. And his Antichrist is going to get it for about seven days. But we're not going to be here, church. We're going to be gone. I'm not predicting a day and hour, but I'm telling you how close it is, and God's going to allow me to, he allows me to do that, all right? He is allow, he allows me, with his blessing, by the way, to tell you that we're close. Don't know the day or the hour, but he is, with God's blessing, I can confidently tell you in the scriptures, he wants his watchmen and watchmen with a spirit of that. I'm not a literal watchman, okay? I'm not an Old Testament watchman sitting on the wall. But I have, I have a, um, a, a, motive, a motive, you know, you know as, as being awake, awake to, to the times, times and the seasons that we're living in, okay? Like, like some people put fancy titles on that, you know, like Watchman, watch, watch Woman. I see that all the time. I mean, I'm awake and aware of what's going on, so I'm trying to warn people. And I'm telling you, we could be raptured before that happens, but if we see, if, ladies and gentlemen, you wake up one day and you see that the Abraham Accords, or let's say maybe that Donald Trump gets reelected, maybe, don't know, don't know, okay, God knows. <laughs> Trump gets reelected, and who does Israel love more than any other U.S. president? They call him the second Cyrus. He could be the guy that helps the land of Israel get divided, not knowing the scriptures. He, like he, like we would hope he, would, he should, you know? I love Donald Trump. And there's people that question his salvation. He may not be saved. He may be saved. He's probably not. Blah, blah, blah. You know what? I pray for him anyway, regardless, one way or the other. I pray for him. And the, the, the sad thing is, is that a lot of those spiritual advisors that he had were giving him bad spiritual advice. And, you know, when you get attacked constantly, slandered in 94 indictments, what are you going to do? You, you know, like... You need, you need good spiritual support around you. And I, I pray in the spirit for a spiritual warfare that he would get that. Okay. But if he has a hand in dividing the land of Israel, that's against God's will. Okay. So that's why I'm saying he could be reinstalled one more time to finish the Abraham Accords. And that's theoretical. I'm not telling you that I know. I'm not telling you I'm a prophet. I'm not. I'm only looking at what's at the landscape, okay? And I'm asking God to help me understand what I'm seeing through the scriptures first. And then I look at the environment out here and I'm like, God, what's going on? What, what, what is it that's happening here that you can tell me, you know? And uh, I'm not telling you it's, that's how it'll go down, but the land is going to get divided. That is that much I can tell you absolutely for certain. Uh, Jerusalem will be divided and the Palestinians will get a piece of it for a time. <laughs> Not for long, but they will get it. And God's going to flatten them as soon as they do. He's going to get angry. But before that wrath can come down, the church has to go up. All right? That's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, 
I probably did not win a lot, <laughs> win over a lot of people, but I don't know if they were going to like my message anyway. But uh, that's it for tonight, okay? And then um, we'll see where the Lord takes us as we go on. Now, if more important things come up, I'm going to try to be ready to come on in a moment's notice. It might be on my cell phone here and there, but I am paying attention to what's going on. There's deception everywhere. Stay in the Bible, all right? Um, maybe I'll give you a recap of some scriptures that you need to be armored up with as a Christian. And I, I want the people that are in our group, all right, the Christians that are in our group, I want you all to be ready. Remember about the Trinity. Remember about the deity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is God. He's God. Okay? It's just that God reveals himself in three identities. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Now, if you want me to try to explain how that works, no, I'm not going to be able to do that. Okay? God is very... What he does and his thoughts and his ways are so far above ours, ladies and gentlemen. I can't even begin to pretend to tell you how he does the miraculous and mysterious things that he does. But I can tell you what scripture teaches us. Okay? And the Holy Spirit lives in us, born-again, Bible-believing Christians. We're going to talk about eternal security in the future. Okay? Eternal security is very important. Um, you're welcome, Annette. Thank you. And God bless you, too. God bless all of you tonight. Share this video. Okay, let it go out. I'm going to put it up on YouTube. And um, let's give them a message. They, you know, they may not like it, but they got to hear it. They've got to hear it. And I'm not leaving the Mormons out. I'm not leaving Roman Catholics out. Lord willing, if I get a chance to talk about them, I will. And uh, But they're king. They only have one king. And you know who that is, all right? God bless you all. Have a good night. And I'll see you in the next Bible study.